Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We want to be your go-to nutritional source for good, clean, clear, concise, succinct, easy to understand nutritional and health information. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. You can also head to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com and order longevity products right off the website. Make sure you take a look at our Beyond Tangy Tangerine nutritional powder or any of the longevity products. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites brightsightben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com, or call 866-735-2470. And also want to remind you about our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Check out our Retinol 5% gel made with retinol and a whole bunch of vitamin C and a little bit of transdermal ingredients to drive, to help support the driving of the material into the dermis, into the lower levels of the skin. And that's it. That's all you're going to find in our skin health products, just active and functional ingredients. Never Never any fillers, waxes, waters, preservatives, silicon oil, perfume, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. You shouldn't have to pay for wax, folks. You shouldn't have to pay for water. You shouldn't have to pay for for preservatives. You should never have to pay for sunflower oil or safflower oil or vegetable oil or silicon or fake oil or mineral oil or anything that doesn't do your skin any good. Is that what you want to put on your skin anyway? I used to wear gloves when I had to formulate with preservatives and, and fragrances and fact and do you really want to be rubbing that stuff on your skin every day no you don't especially if you're dealing with some kind of chronic health challenge or or chemical sensitivity check out all our truth skin health products at truthtreatments.com also have a blog up at truthtreatments.com all right welcome back to the bright side friends once again we're talking about the connective tissue and its relationship to to disease to misery to poor health as we've said there's no long-term chronic degenerative illness that does not involve the connective tissue. Stenosis, sclerosis, fibrosis, these are all the hallmarks of disease and they're all the hallmarks of connective tissue problems. So is dirty blood, which we've been talking about for, I've been talking about for decades, dirty blood. Dirty blood is the precursor to to the disease process and dirty blood is a connective tissue problem. Just the dirty blood itself is a manifestation of fibrosis of the blood and the blood is considered to be connected tissue. So when we talk about dirty blood, just on its own, you've got a connective tissue problem. Dirty blood is fibrotic blood. There's a very, the blood uh, is kept on a very thin edge between flow and fibrosis. It's all 
always ready to become fibrotic. It's just on the edge of becoming fibrotic. This is very important because fibrosis of the blood is the way the body protects delivery, protects the delivery of toxicity. The blood is delivering things to the cells. If there's toxins in the blood, those are going to get delivered to the cells. So the blood is set up to become fibrotic very readily to slow things down if there's poisons in the blood. Now, this should not occur. Poisons should, not, uh, should never be in the blood. So this is not, throughout history, throughout our evolutionary history, that wasn't a problem. It's only been the last few hundred years, really maybe the last thousand years or so, but at an accelerated pace the last 200 years and at a super accelerated pace the last 50 years or even 25 years, as our ability to process food has become so technologically advanced, we've created a food supply that the blood doesn't know what to do with, that the body doesn't know what to do with. We've created a food supply and a nutritional deficiency crisis that has led to things like leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome is when stuff gets into the blood inappropriately through the intestine. This sets off a whole cascade, a domino effect, where uh, a leak, um, toxins leak into the blood, the blood becomes fibrotic, the fibrosis and the, and the, blood, uh, and the toxins that are into the, in the blood get dumped off into the connective tissue, an immune reaction is mounted in the connective tissue, and this results in pain and degeneration. The pain and degeneration that millions upon millions of Americans and people around the world are dealing with unnecessarily. Yesterday we talked about a health condition that's caused by toxic connective tissue that is responsible for severe misery, unbelievable misery, suicide-inducing misery, the kind of misery where you want to just kill yourself, and some people do. It's called fibromyalgia. Six million, five or six million Americans have it diagnosed, and probably millions more have it undiagnosed. Fibromyalgia is never-ending pain, chronic pain from head to toe, numbness, neuropathies, insomnia, not to mention depression, and just plain old feeling lousy. Fibromyalgia is associated with weight issues, it's associated with messed up blood sugar, it's associated with autoimmune problems, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, other types of arthritis. There may also be a risk for heart disease, according to an article published in the Journal of the uh, Public Library of Science, September 2015, fibromyalgia patients have an independent risk for, for cardiovascular disease. If there's other illnesses, this becomes a, quote, significantly elevated risk. Fibromyalgia patients may be at high risk for cancer, according to Dr. Gary McFarland, speaking in 2004 at the annual European Congress of Rheumatology, quote, patients with fibromyalgia and other forms of widespread chronic body pain may be at subsequent increased risk for cancer, unquote. Based on Dr. McFarland's studies, he says uh, the cancer risk was found in specific cancers, and there's a very important clue here. Breast cancer was approximately four times more common in women who had reported fibromyalgia than those without. The rate of prostate cancer in men was elevated. Colon cancer was increased in both sexes. And the fact that these specific cancers were increased reveals a very important clue about what is occurring inside the body of a fibromyalgia patient. Doctors will tell you, oh, we don't know what causes fibromyalgia. You, it's all in your head. That's what they say. Here's an antidepressant. Can't figure out why would somebody be in chronic pain from head to toe because they don't know about the connective tissue. If you've been listening to this program for the last four or five months, you know way more about the connective tissue than the average doctor, unless he's a specialist. So if your doctor says, oh, it's all in your head, here's an antidepressant, and they do. That's what they say to fibromyalgia patients because they can't figure out why somebody would be in chronic pain from head to toe. What they should say is, is we don't really understand and we don't know, but biochemists know what, what's going on. And that's why I always say, if you're sick, you want to go find a biochemist. You want to find somebody who understands biochemistry, not clinical chemistry. This notion of going to a doctor is a meme, a myth, a, a mind virus that does not serve human beings. This idea of going to a doctor when you're dealing with a chronic health issue does not help anybody but the doctor's bottom line. It doesn't help anybody but the doctor's bankers. Nobody gets better by going to a clinician, that is somebody who works with symptoms, if they have a chronic degenerative disease. Go to a biochemist. If you got fibromyalgia, a biochemist will tell you what's happening. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue this when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We will return. Don't go away. All right, we're back on the break. 
right side farm has been here 844-236-6010 is our number and we do have empty lines here all empty lines actually if you've ever tried to call us and gotten a busy signal now's the time to get on board try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010 if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, our Healthy Start Pack, Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Nightly Essence Probiotics, and we're going to talk about probiotics and their importance for uh, helping deal with fibromyalgia and other connective tissue health challenges. Everybody needs a good probiotic supplement, and the best one I've found is the Nightly Essence. I personally know the guy who makes it. I personally know the guy who formulated the product. The Nightly Essence, it also, uh, he formulated it, my, my buddy Troy, formulated it with, uh, with not just a broad spectrum of good bacteria, but also with digestive enzymes. And not just digestive enzymes, but also a very important enzyme called natokinase, N-A-T-T-O-K-I-N-A-S-E, natokinase, helps clean the blood. If all diseases, cell disease, and all cell disease is preceded by dirty blood, cleaning the blood with enzymes can be an awesomely important strategy, not just for dealing with fibromyalgia or dealing with chronic pain or dealing with health challenges, but just for ordinary longevity, using digestive enzymes for their blood cleansing properties, especially natokinase, can have some very helpful pro-longevity anti-aging benefits. So you don't have to have a digestive health challenge to, be, to benefit from digestive enzymes or from probiotics or from digestive health strategies, for any, from anything we're talking about here today. I don't want anybody to believe that you're, if you're feeling healthy that these ideas that we talk about every day on the bright side are not valuable to you. Yes, they're very valuable. You don't have to be sick to benefit from them. This, these can be valuable, uh, valuable strategies for preventing sickness, for anti-aging, for slowing down the aging process, for health, for just for beauty and appearance. Taking care of our health is the best beauty strategy, the best appearance strategy you can employ. I get really, I get irritated when I hear people talking about using, rubbing a cream on your skin in order to get rid of wrinkles because the cream has some kind of magical herb in it. There's a multi-level company that uses a magical herb from Marigold. I'm not even going to mention the name. Well, I will mention the name, Nerium. What a, what a bunch of crap that is. You're going to rub Nerium on your skin and your wrinkles will go away. That's the, this is the idea, this is the, the logic that is perpetuated in the mainstream, that you can rub something on your skin and your wrinkles will disappear. Wrinkles are a sign of connective tissue breakdown. And that same connect, connective tissue breakdown that's occurring in your skin, if you have wrinkles, is occurring in your bones and it's occurring in the, in the connective tissue that's holding your body in place. And if you think that rubbing a cream on your skin that comes from marigold is going to get rid of your, is going to get rid of your wrinkles, you might as well just rub a cream on your bones to get rid of your osteoporosis. Obviously, nobody would ever do that anyway. You can find out all about our longevity products at... Uh, at criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. All right, so we're talking fibromyalgia as a connective tissue disease. It is a connective tissue disease, despite the fact that doctors are mystified how it is that you have fibromyalgia. How can somebody be in pain from head to toe? You must be depressed, so here's an antidepressant. It's all in your head. It is not all in your head, and you don't need an antidepressant. It's all in your blood, where all health challenges are. So what is it that colon cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer have in common? Why would it be that if you have fibromyalgia, these specific cancers would be elevated? Well, it turns out that colon cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, fibromyalgia cancer, all involve the female hormone estrogen. And we know that fibromyalgia patients are mostly women. Whenever a disease, state, a, a disease state affects mostly females, and significantly mostly females, like eight or nine times as many women have fibromyalgia as men, same with autoimmune disease, same with Alzheimer's disease, same with hypothyroidism, these are all estrogen-based. And that tells you something. Estrogen is a very fascinating substance. Most of us have heard of estrogen, Certainly most of you guys listening to this program have heard of estrogen, but we don't really understand what estrogen is thanks to some unfortunate marketing. Most of us think of estrogen as a female hormone or as a youth hormone or as an anti-wrinkle hormone or something that you take to get rid of your hot flashes. Some people uh, recognize estrogen as a birth control hormone, but it's not these things. 
It's true, obviously, that women, women produce more estrogen than men. Thus, if there is a health challenge that affects mostly women, estrogen needs to be considered as one of the culprits. And understanding estrogen above and beyond mainstream conventional wisdom is extremely important if we're going to understand how to be healthy, not just for women, but also for men. And if we're going to understand connective tissue disease and the relationship of the connective tissue to, uh, to the disease process, we've got to understand estrogen. Estrogen is a fibrosis hormone. Estrogen, estrogen is very tricky stuff. Yes, it's important for, uh, for growing a baby. And there, are some, there's some, there is a relationship between estrogen and youth. But for the most part, estrogen is a pro-inflammatory fibrosis-inducing substance. It has complicated effects on the body because it's broken down into metabolites. It's broken down as it's cleared. All hormones have to be cleared out of the body, especially super powerful hormones. And, and estrogen arguably is the most powerful hormone in the body. When I was compounding estrogen creams, we would have to be so careful about how we dosed with estrogen or how much estrogen we put in, our, in the cream. We'd have to use what are, we used to call them triple beam scales. Now they have super high power digital scales. Back in the day, we used to use these triple beam scales. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. A triple beam scale is, w would measure to the, to the microgram. And now you have to use digital scales that measure to the microgram when you're compounding estrogen creams because if you're off by just a tiny little bit, you can cause problems. You can cause some serious toxicity and side effects because estrogen is so powerful and potentially toxic. So here's what the body has to do. When estrogen goes up, it immediately becomes cleared it immediately gets broken down. Unfortunately, estrogen gets broken down into toxic compounds. And this is where we run into a problem with estrogen. These toxic metabolites, they're called metabolites, they're just breakdown products of estrogen. These toxic metabolites of estrogen have to be cleared immediately from the body because they're toxic. And they're cleared out of the body via the action of bile and bile comes from the liver. Now, this is where we get into problems. Toxic estrogen, if we have bile issues, gallbladder issues, liver issues, if we're not clearing out bile itself appropriately, estrogen metabolites can build up. And this is why women and men, but especially women, need to keep the gallbladder. Now, if you're using prescription drugs, you're going to saturate your bile and your bile will be less effective at clearing out estrogen. If you have food allergies or food toxins, again, you're going to saturate your bile and your bile will be less able to clear out estrogen. If you're not getting enough fiber or if you're constipated, if you're hypothyroid and you're not having regular bowel movements, again, toxic estrogen will build up. So what you see here is that estrogen clearance, getting rid of the toxic metabolites of estrogen is largely a digestive issue. This is the link between leaky gut syndrome, food allergies and digestive problems, liver disease and gallbladder issues, and female health problems, and estrogen buildup, and estrogen buildup in men as well if you're dealing with prostate cancer or prostate disease. Estrogen metabolism is tied into a healthy digestive system, and that's always going to be our first point on the triangle of disease. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting up BenFuchsArchives.com. That's a really cool website. It has all of my miscellaneous websites all in one, including our Critical Health News website and, and blog, PharmacistBen.com blog and BrightSideBen blog. Uh, BrightSideBen.com blog. Also, my Truth Treatment products, uh, TruthTreatments.com uh, website is also at BenFuchsArchives.com, TruthTreatments.com. You can, you can find all our Truth Treatment formulations at truthtreatments.com, including our retinol 5% gel, truth serum, truth balm, truth omega-6 healing cream. I created the truth products because I was so sick of the baloney that is out there in the world of skincare. Almost every day I see some other doctor or 
somebody, some skincare company or somebody who just wants to be in the skincare business because they can make a lot of money selling a new skincare line. Folks, there's not a lot of things you need on your skin, but you do need to have a lot of those few things. And those few things are basically vitamin A and vitamin C. And you need a big dose of them. And you're not going to find them in very many products. Number one, because vitamin A in its retinol form could be a little bit aggressive and no skincare company wants to mess around with an aggressive ingredient, even though that's what you need. And number two, because vitamin C is so unstable. You got to have fat soluble vitamin C and you got to have a high dose of it and you got to have enough of enough retinol to make a difference and it's a good idea to put these two ingredients in a transdermal base that is a base that will drive the ingredients into the skin into the lower levels of the skin where the action is i couldn't find anything like that so i made my own and that's what truth treatments are truth 5% retinol 5% gel truth serum truth balm truth omega 6 healing cream never any preservatives fragrances fillers waxes oils silicon water nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of my truth skin health products that's why they last for three or four or even five or six months retinol our retinol 5% gel can last you a year if you do it at use it as directed all right so we're talking uh, well let's see I'll, talk, I'll continue we'll finish up this whole discussion on estrogen i don't know if we'll finish it up but we'll continue talking about estrogen tomorrow really fascinating substance very misunderstood substance and the most important uh, most important reason why estrogen is misunder misunderstood is because there's really no one thing called estrogen there is there are various estrogens, and then there's the metabolites, or the breakdown products of estrogen, and many of these breakdown products are toxic. Under normal conditions, they get cleared out in the bile, through the stool, and as long as you're not constipated, as long as you're making enough bile, as long as you have your gallbladder, you're not going to have any issues. However, many of us are constipated. Many of us have liver problems, so we're not making enough bile. Many of us have our gallbladders removed, so we're not squirting enough bile into the, into the intestine as we eat. All of these can interfere with the normal elimination of these toxic byproducts, and this is where we run into problems with estrogen. And make no mistake about it, estrogen is not a kind and loving substance. It's supposed to be secreted in minuscule amounts. It's in the blood in nanogram or less amounts. It's a billionth of a gram or less. If you use estrogen in, a, in the birth control pill, you're getting thousands of times that amount. And then, of course, we have the whole issue with xenoestrogens, foreign estrogens, estrogens that are found in our dairy, estrogens that are found in our in, in fish, estrogens that are found in our in, in meat, in poultry, in, in chicken, in turkey, and in uh, in uh, beef. We have a serious problem with excess estrogen in our environment. And estrogen, by the way, is a type of stress hormone. As if we don't have enough, uh, enough stress issues, as if we don't have enough cortisol going now, we've got to deal with excess amounts of estrogen from our environment, estrogen, uh, excess amounts of estrogen in our food, and excess amounts of estrogen in terms of toxic metabolites building up in the body following issues with bile. If you're on prescription drugs, the chances are very good that your bile is not going to be operating as effectively as it might be because bile is responsible for clearing out prescription drugs. All right, we'll, we'll continue this. Uh, we'll continue talking about this tomorrow. 844-236-6010 is our number from the journal Neuroscience and Therapeutics. Fibromyalgia symptoms improve with coenzyme Q10 supplementation. I absolutely love coenzyme Q10 as a supplement. It's not a uh, mighty 90 essential nutrient. You can get by without supplementing with coenzyme Q10. But if you are dealing with any health challenge, whether it's fibromyalgia or heart disease or skin health issues, or you want to prevent these kinds of issues, you would be, would be very wise to dose with CoQ10. And you're not going to find enough CoQ10 in a multiple vitamin, even if it's in there. Uh, you're not going to find CoQ10 in very many formulations because it's an expensive nutrient. So you you can't you can you'll probably get some CoQ10 in, in many formulations, maybe five or ten milligrams, but you need a lot more than that, especially if you're dealing with fibromyalgia. If you're a bodybuilder or you're a weightlifter or you're an athlete and you're putting chronic stress on your body, you need more coenzyme Q10. If you've been diagnosed with any mitochondrial myopathy, that's the latest thing that functional medicine folks, not so much conventional doctors, but alternative practitioners and functional medicine practitioners, they're all about the mitochondria, which is 
super important. The mitochondria are our little energy furnaces that produce, they're the little organelles, little substructures inside of cells that produce energy. And they're super important. You can't really target the mitochondria. And if anybody ever tells you you have a mitochondrial myop, uh, my, uh, mitochondrial disease, it's really kind of silly. All diseases are going to involve the mitochondria. Coenzyme Q10 is one of the best supplements you could take for helping support mitochondrial energy production. That is to say, if you're dealing with any health challenge or you don't want to be dealing with a health challenge, get yourself on 50 to 100 milligrams of coenzyme Q10. Take it every day, especially if you're dealing with a health challenge or if you're toxing out your body with cigarette smoke or alcohol or prescription drugs on a regular basis or if you're taking a statin drug. This is one of the hidden, hidden uh, toxicities associated with statins. They deprive your body of coenzyme Q10. It turns out that the same chemistry that's involved in manufacturing cholesterol is also involved in the body making coenzyme Q10. And CoQ10 deficiencies are very likely if you're on a statin drug. In fact, it may be that the muscle weakness and muscle pain that so many people know about when they take statin drugs is really a sign of coenzyme Q10, CoQ10, coenzyme Q10 deficiency. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Terry uh, in Virginia, I believe. Is that right, Terry? Yes. Hello, good morning. Hi. How you doing? Can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. What's up? How can we help you? Awesome. Um, can you give me a protocol for a macular hole? A macular hole for you? I hope not for you. Yeah, yeah for you? Yeah. So that's, uh, I hadn't heard, I, I've actually never heard. It's a, it's a, a macular hole is just a, basically a break in your macula. It's a, it's a, uh, it's the end result of degeneration of the macula, but you sound so young. How old are you approximately? 54. How old? 54. 54. Yeah. You're way too young for this to occur. Um, are you diabetic? Do you have, uh, any, any uh, blood sugar issues? Um, not, no. Not that you know of. It is the only thing I know of. Well, okay. Here's the deal. That should not happen. That's definitely a sign that, that something's going on there. Uh, and you cannot just have a macular hole without having some kind of biochemical breakdown in the body. That's why I ask if you're if you've been diagnosed as a diabetic. Whether you've been diagnosed or not, you can pretty much rest assured you got problems that way. Um, are you carrying a little extra weight that you didn't have when you were say your twenties or thirties? Um, maybe 10 pounds. Okay, well, that's a, that's a sign that your insulin, your body's starting to become resistant to insulin. Uh, the macular hole or the macular degeneration in general is associated with, uh, with blood sugar problems, and the hypothyroidism can definitely be an issue. So hang tight. We're going to get you a nice protocol. We'll take care of that for you. And then if you're on hold, hang tight as well. We'll try to get to as many calls as possible. I told you guys to call in early, though. Now the, for, now the boards are filling up. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we got a full board here. I'm going to try to go real fast. Terry, are you there, ma'am? Yes. I wish I had more time to talk to you because uh, your macular degeneration or the macular hole that you're talking about is it's kind of fascinating. It's actually, a, it's actually like a type of arthritis of the eye, believe it or not. The way the eye is constructed, the jelly stuff, the jelly material that, that makes up what we call the eyeball is actually connected to the back of the eye, the retina, via connective tissue. When that connective tissue shrivels up, it can pull on the uh, on the retinal surface, and it can actually form a can actually create a, a hole or a weakness in the in the macula, and that's what you're dealing with. The connective tissue is shriveling up inside the eye. So what do you got to do? Well, first of all, we got to figure out why that's happening, and that usually involves a digestive health issue. If you don't know it's there, find it, especially if you're hypothyroid. Uh, there's it's very difficult to have a thyroid issue without having a digestive issue first. So find your digestive health problem, a, a fast and the elimination diet is the way you do that. I'm sure you've, if you've listened to this program before, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you, you do a two or three day Swero V cleanse or a complete fast. And then when you start eating again, pick one food at a time, one type of food at a time, and then uh, try to assess your digestive health. Uh, look for digestive health issues associated with that and then eliminate foods that cause problems. Use probiotics, the nightly essence to help support gut health, digestive enzymes, the ultimate enzymes with all your meals and apple cider vinegar with all your meals. Get on the healthy start pack and then start using connective tissue building nutrients such
such as the glucogel caps, vitamin C. You can't make connective tissue with vitamin C. It's extremely important for the eyes also, by the way. And then also, um, you might want to try high alluronic acid supplements, 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams a day. I'd be using bone broth protein. You can find that at brightsidehealth.com. Also, plain old bone broth, chicken soup, homemade chicken soup. You're looking at building the connective tissue. So you got a couple things going on here. Work on the digestive system. Work on your connective tissue. And I asked you if you were had any blood sugar issues, and it's unlikely... It's, it's unlikely not to have blood sugar issues. We all have them, especially as we get older. It's almost impossible not to, and you can tell you have a blood sugar issue if you're, you're, you're a little heavier than you used to be. That's usually a sign of insulin resistance, so start to treat yourself as a diabetic. Use the Sweeties product, uh, uh, all the B vitamins, really, uh, ultimate niacin, ultimate selenium. Treat yourself as a diabetic even if you're not diagnosed as such. Last but not least, you may want to try balancing out estrogen, as we've been talking about, the toxicity associated associated with estrogen with pregnenolone capsules, 100 milligrams a day, with vitamin A, 20,000 IU a day, and vitamin E, 400 IU a day. There's a ton more stuff you could do, but that's where you really want to focus. You notice we didn't say anything directly about the eye. We're talking about the connective tissue and taking care of the overall metabolic issues in the body. Hope that helps, Terry. I got a bunch of calls I want to get to. Okay? Thank you. Thank Have you. yourself a beautiful day. All right, let's move on to... Uh, Let's go to David in Texas. Good morning, David. Yeah, hi. Good morning, Ben. Hey. Um, so first up, I want to say it was super good seeing you here in Austin a few weeks ago. I saw oh. you at, uh, at uh, the event you were at. And it was are really, you really David? Cool. Which which David are you? Graves' disease, David? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had Graves' disease. I can't say hi to you. Uh, hey, hey, David. Yeah, good to talk to you. So I'm going to be back at Brave New Books, or back in Austin at Brave New Books on the 22nd. You might want to look into that. Anybody out there listening, if you didn't make the talk... Uh, to make our, our last talk, I'll be out there again on the 22nd of Brave New Books. What's going on, David? How can well, I help you, man? Well, my uncle has been diagnosed with fibrosis of the lung. Okay. Uh, he never smoked. He's been super healthy. Um, the doctors have put him on oxygen, and it looks like he's deteriorating really quickly. Well, here, he, and here's the well, let me get to that. Let me address this real quickly. Here, here's the problem with he's super healthy. And I'm not saying this to be mean or to pick on you in any way, but I get these calls and I get calls and letters all the time. People say, I'm super healthy, but I got this. Or I eat really well, but I got that. See, when we think we're super healthy and then we get a chronic health challenge, what that tells us is we're not super healthy. I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm saying that because that, if we understand that, now we can start to work. If we say, oh, I'm super healthy, but I was just sitting around minding my own business and all of a sudden I got pulmonary fibrosis, we got nothing we can do because it's just angel that sprinkled pulmonary fibrosis dust on our head. There's nothing we could do. But if we say, okay, where are my health challenges? What can I, where can I start to work on my body? What is going wrong in my body? Now we have a place to work. So first of all, never say he's perfectly healthy, but he has fi pulmonary fibrosis. I'm not just saying that to you. I'm saying that to other listeners as well. We got to find other health challenges. You can't work on pulmonary fibrosis by itself. Any more than with our last caller, you can work on a macular hole by itself. Pulmonary fibrosis is a sign that the body is attempting to repair the lungs. That's what fibrosis is. Make sense so far? Yeah. Well, okay, so now I want you to work with me, okay? So I'm just going to say, tell you things. I'm going to see if they make sense. So fibrosis is a repair mechanism. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're now. Okay. If you have a repair Absolutely. mechanism, that means the tissue's breaking down. If the tissue's breaking down, that means something is getting into the system that's causing the breakdown or not enough of the right stuff is getting into the system. Now, we'll work with the second part in a moment, but the first part, what is getting into the system? Well, assuming he's not smoking, you said he's not smoking, that's usually the cause of pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, so he's not smoking, so that's not a cause. He's not an IV drug user, so that's not going to be a cause. That leaves only one way things get into the body, and that's through food. Now, we can't really relate, we can't really make a connection between foods he's eating and pulmonary fibrosis, but because that's more of a long-term further on down the road effect, but what we can do is we can look for immediate effects that are related to food. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Okay, so what we got to do is we got to link foods up to specific health challenge, to specific uh, digestive issues, most importantly, but also maybe fatigue or rashes or asthma or some other immune problem. But the easiest thing is going to be to look for a connection between foods and bowel movement issues, foods and gas, foods and intestinal bloating or discomfort of any kind, foods and heartburn, foods and digestive symptomology. And I don't mean to beat a dead horse here, but it's just so important to say this because no doctor 
scriptures are telling us this. The only way the body becomes fibrotic is if it's being attacked. The only attacks come in through IV or through injection, through the skin, through breathing, or through uh, food. Most likely it's going to be food. So you do the whole food workup as we talk about all the time on the program. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start to make sure that he's getting enough nutrients, particularly nutrients that help support repair of the connective tissue. Fibrosis is a connective tissue deterioration problem. That means hyaluronic acid supplements. That means bone broth protein. That means cartilage supplements. That means glucosamine and the glucogel caps. That means supplemental uh, gelatin, perhaps. Also vitamin C, because you cannot make connective tissue without vitamin C. Uh, you'll get vitamin C in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Personally, I would be taking extra doses of vitamin C. There are some anti-fibrotic kinds of nutri uh, uh, nutrients you could take, particularly vitamin E has anti-fibrotic benefits. You can also take uh, use sulfur, MSM sulfur, which helps regenerate connective tissue. Use the Healthy Start Pack. Get them on the ultimate enzymes and have them take them with meals as well, on, as, well as on an empty stomach. Using your ultimate enzymes on an empty stomach can help, uh, can have antifibrotic benefits. Uh, I would be using maybe two or three capsules of the ultimate enzymes maybe twice a day on an empty stomach along with meals. Make sure he's using apple cider vinegar with his meals. Now, I didn't tell you about blood sugar control. I didn't tell you about activating the relaxation nervous system through deep breathing techniques. Those are all important, especially with the lungs. Uh, last but not least, I like NAC, N-acetylcysteine, for lung health issues. Uh, N-acetylcysteine is a component of something called mucomist, which is actually used to treat lung problems in uh, cystic fibrosis patients. You can get NAC at any drugstore you can all, or any health food store. You can also get uh, NAC in my blemish repair complex, which you'll find at truthtreatments.com. David, I'm going to let you go, man. I want to get to a couple more calls. I hope I helped you out, buddy. Thank you so much for your call and, and for your kind words. All right, let's go real quick, see if we can get uh, Lane in Texas. Good morning, Lane. How you doing? I'm uh, fine, sir. Uh, let's, I had a question about high blood pressure. Uh, yes. I just, I had it fairly high, and uh, I was feeling so so bad. Uh, I got, uh, my doc gave me uh, uh, Edder Biclar. Okay. To lower it. And, okay, it probably uh, did that. It. Sir? It probably did that. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm sure that's, there's tons of side effects, and uh, I, I I need to see about uh, getting weaning off yourself of it. off. And okay, let's talk high blood pressure. You and 80 million Americans or more are dealing with something called idiopathic hypertension. Idiopathic means we don't know what the heck is causing it. Idiopathic hypertension has a cause like everything else has a cause, and it's simple once you understand the relationship between the circulatory system and the emergency stress management system. Elevated, high, elevated blood pressure that is of mysterious cause always involves activation of emergency, uh, the emergency system, and it usually involves sugar as well. Relax the body through oxygenation and deep breathing, number one. That's the fastest way to lower the blood pressure. Sit in a hot bath. That'll drop your blood pressure like a stone. Now, obviously, you have to get out of the bath. Eventually, when you get out of it, use relaxation techniques. Niacin, your ultimate niacin can have benefits for you. Get on a 500 milligram tablet of that a day or capsule of that a day. Use magnesium, use your healthy start pack, and then uh, treat yourself as if you were diabetic. That's the number one reason why the body, uh, why blood pressure goes up and the body feels like it's an emergency posture. I'm out of time. I, I apologize, Lane. You guys, if I let John hold, call back tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to y'all later, folks. Bye for now.